All right, let's uh, get some news going out here tonight on Truth Broadcast Network. And the first thing that we'll do is just hit breaking news, refresh the page. And four minutes ago, Sandy Hook actor deletes Truth Paradigm's channel after being exposed. That will be from Team Wake Him Up. But I think we got to hit this uh, as top story. Now, while Obama has released the initial 300 commanders to go into Iraq, then another 150, and then another 300 here recently, totaling 750 inside of Iraq, what he's not mentioning is the fact that there are thousands of of Marines sitting in the Persian Gulf. Some people are, are stating, is there a planned invasion in a, in a certain spot, certain region, or are they just there for backup? Now, regardless, there are already six warships in the Persian Gulf. The USS Arleigh Burke, the USS Truxton, the USS Gunston Hall, the USS George H.W. Bush, the USS O'Kane, the USS Philippine Sea, and the USS Mesa Verde, along with helicopters, warplanes, and everything that can be used for an invasion or for the evacuation of U.S. citizens. Now, there's also been drones flying over Iraq for the past several days, and it's been confirmed now that they are armed with Hellfire missiles. So... That's a look at what's going on on the outskirts of Iraq here and what's really going on. Now, for those who don't know, your Navy ships are going to tend to move around together. You don't send one out by itself. And when you have that many together, that'll be called a fleet. And some people are going to say this is normal activity. There's always a fleet in the Persian Gulf. However, I've looked at the mainstream media propaganda that's been going on. And I'm sure all of you have heard about the Hobby Lobby, well, the, the Supreme Court ruling and the debate that's probably going on all around you amongst your friends. People are arguing about this. That's what we call a massive distraction. So they're doing the the preconditioning of the sheeple on the mainstream media. They're doing a massive distraction. They're putting people in place. We already know that they control ISIS. The New World Order controls ISIS. There's only one missing piece here, and that is a massive, alleged terrorist attack to justify going in whether that happens in Iraq or whether that happens in the United States or in the UK I don't know but somewhere there's going to be a massive attack and the world is going to come together and say something has to be done <clears throat> and they're going to go in the problem is they're not going in after ISIS. They're going in with ISIS. So who are they going after? Is it Iran? On with their troops. We now have the USS Bataan heading to the per Persian Gulf with a thousand more Marines aboard with more artillery, ammunition, and they're going to join six other warships that are already in the region, flying drones and everything else. So... That's just a look at the Persian Gulf. Uh, as I see any more activity taking place, I'll keep you guys updated as always. It's been Dabu7. Eyes open. Eyes to the skies. And that is Dabu7. So he's keeping an eye on... Well, that's Dabu7. He keeps an eye on everything for us. Here we have a massive propaganda piece. Again, this is the conditioning of the people to justify... An invasion. Website's really slowing down. I'm going to have to get a cache going. This group, 
that most of us know as ISIS, that used to go by the name of ISIL, is trying to change its name to flat out the Islamic State, as you can see right here. And with that said, they have released a five-year plan. They plan to carve out this caliphate all the way from Spain to China. Now, it's unclear if ISIS includes parts of China in their caliphate, but Western China is home to millions of Muslims. And knowing what we know, who's backing them, who's training them and supporting them all the way, and for those of you who have not been paying attention, they've, they've trained them in Jordan, they've trained them in Turkey, and they have launched from both places. They have pounded out Syria. They have taken over the whole northern part and declared it the capital of this caliphate. They have stormed down into Baghdad, took it over, took all the weapons back up into Syria to the, to the capital of this caliphate. And now, as you can see, at some point here, they have released their plans, a five-year plan to take over all of this land. Half of Africa. I mean, you're, you can see it. Spain, all of these regions. If there's one thing that I want to point out here, to everyone out there that has the eye to see, this is the most important. You ask me who's running the world, you ask me who the, who the puppet man, I try to tell people all the time, I've been telling you this whole time. This comes down from the Jesuit command. Okay? They play both sides of all these wars. They did the same thing in the Ukraine. They backed the Nazi, made on soldiers. They were shooting both the police and the protesters. We busted them there. It's the same old song and dance everywhere you go. They are trying to, to play off both sides. That way they have full control in the situation. Now they've already destabilized Libya. They've already destabilized Egypt. And if you've not noticed it by now, if you look at the map right before your very eyes, you can see, and it should be a big red flag to all of you, there's one big chunk of land that they missed. Why would they not target Italy? Why would they just say, oh, the heck with it, go all the way around it, all the way around it the other way? Really? I can tell you why. Because that's central command. If you cannot see it now in black and white right in front of your own... Now, for those who don't know, the Jesuits work for the Pope. The Jesuits work for the Vatican. We're talking about Rome. Rome, Italy. I just did a broadcast the other night on the various denominations and the evolution of the Christian church. And the biggest perversion of the Christian church and the teachings of Christ is the Catholic church. Always has been, always will be. What do you think Christ meant when he said, don't quote me on this, but it was something like, there will be many antichrists. Because I believe he was talking specifically about the popes. The Jesuits are a secret order that works out of the Vatican and does the bidding of the Catholic Church. So when we look at this alleged caliphate to be, Rome's like right here. It's kind of ridiculous to think they'd take all that land, but let's leave Rome alone. I think that the W7 has a great point here. ...face by their own plans, by design. This is what they want, this is what they're going after, and they're going to go right around Rome. You're telling me they don't see Rome as an enemy? How is that? Now, I want to make sure people understand this. The reason for this is because Rome still controls the world. There's the old saying, all roads, all roads lead to Rome. The Vatican still controls the world. 
And you'll have a lot of people say, no, it's the Jews, it's the Zionists. And I'm sure they've got some degree of control. But it is the Vatican that is trying to unite all of the world's religions. What unites these people who are trying to form a caliphate? But one of the world's religions. And what are they doing when they go around Rome? But bowing to a different religion. That's unheard of in the Muslim world. Unless they're on the same team. I'll tell you how. Because that's who created them. Maybe now, if you have the eyes to see, you can see who is running this whole thing. It's in black and white, right in front of you. You want to look at Israel, and people want to say, uh, Zionist Jews, this and that. And you see the Pope go in there, and trying to make this, this peaceful arrangement. This whole thing is being played out uh, on their terms here, piece by piece, and it's all by chaos. That is their motto. And in the end, it's genocide in every single state. So, you know, I've said it before, Boko Haram and Africa, they're under the same umbrella, and they'll gladly join these units. And especially when they're being given free APCs, Humvees, uh, all kinds of machinery, ammunition, guns, you name it, all the training, they're being taken care of, all you got to do is go out and kill whoever they say. And these young guys know not nothing about the this religion about true jihad uh some of the the highest ranking muslims out there coming out of jordan have stated this that they don't want them even if they're aligned with them doing anything in jordan because it's just going to make them all look bad like they're all terrorist so they see the separation even these other groups out here that that do not like the the king of jordan that are against him, they're like, well, we're still not aligning with ISIS. They're smart enough. They see it. They see that they're controlled. And that's key because if they were not, they would join right with them and they could overthrow Jordan and the same thing would happen. So it's all in the playbooks. This is what they're going to plan to do. Jordan, Turkey, you name it. From This, this is how they're going to see it. From the African coast all the way to the border of, of China. And the big gap, the big hole in the middle that they leave out, Rome. Now you know. It's been Dabu 7. All right. And your eyes should be open. And what do we see here? Threats from ISIS to Jordan may require U.S. and Israeli troops. We see a picture of the Pope. You shouldn't be surprised if you're starting to catch on to what's going on here. To see the the kingdom of Jordan. Now, I've stated before how the CIA had trained ISIS in Jordan's backyard, funded by by the puppet masters here, and it looks as though now they're trying to threaten Jordan. And what they're trying to do is to get the other groups within Jordan to join them so they can basically eventually show up right on the doorstep of Israel. Now... I warned of this right from the get-go that they would end up coming back to this region and threatening the king. Uh, they would eventually end up trying to do the same thing to Turkey. That is where they officially launched from. When they were trying to get into Syria to start this whole thing, uh, they were launching from the border with Turkey. And they were also being trained in the borders here in Jordan. And then they left out from there and went into Syria, engaged, and then moved down into Iraq. And now they're taking all of the supplies out of Iraq, back up into Syria, into the northern part, to this new capital that they have established in their so-called caliphate. Now, a leader of Jordan's Salafi movement has warned that those who are aligned with the Islamic State should not go out and rally or take any action inside of Jordan that it's outside their religiously sanctioned mission and that it would hand a gift to the Jordanian authorities that are trying to depict them as terrorists. He says, unfortunately, these are kids who know very little about their own religion. I wish so many people could hear that. 
These are kids who know very little about their very own religion, about jihad, and are not willing to answer or listen to nobody because they have been trained and given a license to kill by the elite of this world. That's what's taking place. Now, if the Bedouin jihadists combine with ISIS, it would bring an Islamist revolt to King Abdullah and Islamist army right to the doorstep of Israel. Now, there are 12,000 U.S. troops inside of Jordan and Israeli forces, and they're stating that they may be needed if ISIS and these other groups combine and they decide to revolt. So they've done it everywhere else by design. It looks like Jordan will be next. Eventually, they will get them into the fold. And one of the following videos, I'm going to touch on this whole map, a five-year plan that's been laid out here by ISIS in exactly every, every square inch that they plan to conquer within the next five years. And it's quite massive. So as I hear of more information pertaining to Jordan, I will keep you guys updated as always. This has been Dapu7. Eyes open. So we got a pretty good idea of the situation that's going on there. And I don't want this to be the Dabu 7 show when I do the news hour here. So we're going to scroll through the news. Massive meteor explosion over Devon. Biggest UK fireball ever does take a moment to uh, load the page. This is Dapu7. He's back. And what you've witnessed right there is what they're saying is the largest fireball to ever strike over the UK here. See, it fades out about right there. Okay, that's all that really matters, literally, in relation to this. To ever strike... There it is. There's the largest fireball to ever strike the UK, and we are done with it. Blackwater threatened to kill U.S. official during Iraq war. That should come as no surprise on the face of the earth. We're going to update the network. We'll click on breaking one more time, see if anything else just crossed the... Uh... Well, let's check this out. Sandy Hook actor deletes Truth Paradigm's channel. And we do have a constant war to keep our YouTube channels up. Make no mistake about it. I've had several shut down. And then we're going to go to just general news. Review time! Hot. Run for your life! Run for your life! Mm -mm. Run for your life! Run for your life! What the heck these jokers going? Who are they running from? Fake dead shooter! Ooh, look at all that space. Stupid looking jokers. And speaking of stupid looking jokers, how about that joker named Kevin Mark? You know, fake wanna be actor, trying to get his career on point, acting like he gonna get his big break with this Sandy Hook hoax. Well, little Kevin Mark MTV's Kevin Mark got exposed by Truth Paradigm One, who was originally Truth Paradigm, but what happened? Well, little Kevin Mark had to get her videos deleted, not once, but twice, and then he got her whole channel deleted. She was the one who exposed this tale. Yeah, you see, he didn't like that. He wanted to make sure nobody else knew. He didn't want your mama to know. He didn't want your daddy to know. He didn't want your cousin to know. Definitely didn't want your friends to know. Didn't want your neighbors to know or your teacher. He thought he was going to get away with it. Oh, no, Kevin Mark. Not going to happen. Hold on. Jokers look so stupid. It ain't going to happen because look here. We got the Truth Paradigm 1 channel right here. Y'all link in the description box. Make sure you subscribe to Truth Paradigm 1. They done messed around and took a channel down thinking this is going to stop people from seeing that video. Matter of fact, that video link is in the description box. You can see it for yourself. Maybe you don't even know what I'm talking about, but it's going to be there. You jokers. You shouldn't have been participating in the hoax if you didn't want to get exposed. That's just what it is. Hey, all you Sandy Hook truthers. Um, 
As you guys can probably tell, this is a new YouTube channel. Um, I have been actively researching the Sandy Hook hoax uh, since basically, you know, the day or two after it happened on December 14th, uh, 2012. I had never made any videos before. Uh, I had always thought about it, um, but I really, really feel the need to now um, with recent events coming to light. And I just discovered something. I'm not sure if this has been found out by any of you uh, Sandy Hook truthers out there. Uh, what I do know is that I've never actually seen this before, but it was something that uh, caught me by surprise when I was doing a little bit of research tonight. I was looking at photos of the funerals for the apparent uh, dead children, which we all know, anyone with half a brain who's done any research whatsoever knows that absolutely no children nor adults died on December 14th, 2012 in Newton, Connecticut. Um, nonetheless, there were funerals held and I was looking at photos and I ran across this photo here. Now I thought to myself, hmm, that's interesting. This guy at least here appears to be African American or some sort of uh, ethnic descent similar to. And as far as I recalled, I don't remember anyone who they say died at Sandy Hook being African. It just kind of caught my eye and I found it a little bit odd. So as you can see, when you scroll down, it says Zulma seen with her grandson, Kevin Mark, 19, cries as she pays her respects to the shrine created under the school sign in Sandy Hook after yesterday's shooting, shootings at Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newton, Connecticut, uh, December 15th, 2012. So I decided to do a little bit of research. So I googled the name Zulma Sen. As you guys can see here, um, when I googled it, obviously, without any date specifications, everything that came up was basically referring to the, you know, December 15th, this day. But when I did it between, I just picked a random date years before, between August 6, 2007 and December 13th, 2012, there's no results found for Zulma Sen. <laughs> so that's a little bit odd in and of itself. There's literally nothing nothing with those names together. I made sure I put it in the quotation marks, so there's nothing with that person's name. So I thought, hmm, that's really interesting because there would have to be something, right? If this person's name was actually Zulma Sen, you would assume that there would be some sort of record of them, you know, whether it be a birth, a marriage, a death, you know, something, anything, but no. You know, I'm gonna tell you, I'm sorry, I'm eating an apple. The motive for them wanting to use a name that does not exist would be so that they can Google the name and check on every single bit of coverage in relation to that person and see that it's removed from the Internet as, as is needed. In other words, if they use the name John Doe, and they're like, I wonder if anybody figured out John Doe was an actor, well, let's go Google John Doe and find out. Well, obviously, there's going to be so many John Doe's out there, but if you use a name that doesn't exist, that doesn't come up in search engine results for your psychological operation, you've compartmentalized that person so that after the PSYOP, there's literally no information existing on the internet until the day of the PSYOP. You understand? Oh, there's nothing except Sandy Hook. See, when I remove this, there's tons about Zulma Sen. It's all about Sandy Hook. Then I decided to look up Kevin Mark. And what did I find when I looked up Kevin Mark? This is really, really interesting, actually. So, okay, here's another photo of him. Notice the big gauged ears. Look what I found. So look, actor Kevin Mark. Hmm, that's interesting. He's an actor. There's some more photos of him. Let's just pull this up nice and big. Oh, look at that. Imagine that. That's the same person and they're an actor. That's really curious, isn't it? Look at that. Septum piercing, nose ring. 
gauged ears. Hmm. File. Actor. Kevin Mark. Hmm. That's really curious. So then I dug around a little bit more. But what did I find? <laughs> I found this post here. Anybody looking for actors? It's posted by Kevin Mark. It's posted on, look at that, December 9th, 2012. <laughs> he posted, anybody looking for actors, voice actors, someone to interview, a rapper? Contact me by replying here or email, blah, 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 blah. Hmm, that's really interesting, considering that he posted that five days before Sandy Hook. Hmm, someone to interview, interesting. Um, this person responded, I'm not sure if it has anything to do with it, saying, me and my friend's production company are working on a feature film on a virus outbreak. The script is almost finished. It'll be a fun project if you want to be part of it. What kind of acting do you do? Do you have any previous experience? Also, where do you live? And do you have a resume or reel we can look at? Again, December 12th, or sorry, December 9th, 2012. He says he's be, be more than happy to be a part of it. He's very theatrical. He's willing to do, <laughs> look at this, so I am willing to do anything. <laughs> Interesting. You mean like pretend you had a lot? This almost looks like there's some coded language here. In other words, and I mean it sounds out there, but it, it almost looks like that in some kind of secret society, they're using the internet. And they just put the feeler out there. I'm looking for acting work. And some operative of the New World Order answers with something that, that looks to the public like really inconspicuous. Oh, yeah, we, we're making this movie, blah, blah, blah. And then if the person replies with, I'm willing to do anything, what they're saying is, Yes, I'll be a part of that PSYOP. I'm not saying that's the case. I'm saying that's what it looks like to me. It looks like coded language, hidden in plain sight. Loved one die in the biggest <laughs> theatrical. He's willing to do, <laughs> look at this. So I am willing to do anything. <laughs> Interesting. You mean like pretend you had a loved one die in the biggest <laughs> scam hoax put on by the U.S. government in the history of the U.S. government. <laughs> so then I did a little bit more, and this person says they'd be honored to have him aboard. Of course you would. So then I did a little bit of more research here, and what did I find? But I found his Facebook page. I found it really interesting that just a few days ago he posted a trailer. <laughs> Look at this. How fucking satanic can you get? How much more blatantly satanic and evil can you possibly get? It's this new movie starring him called The Cipher. There's a whole inverted pentagram there. Look at this horned beast. <laughs> and so I clicked the link. It brought me to this and I will play it for you guys. Enjoy. She kind of looks familiar. I know it's pretty minor, 
Maybe it's not. <sighs> it doesn't surprise me in the least. I just had never seen anyone report about it. For all I know, you guys already could have figured this out. Um, there are so many things to figure out about this, but I just figured I'd post it for you guys to look at. I'm sure more research could be done into this. Um, make of it what you will and form your impression. All right, so <clears throat> that's about enough of that. And you can kind of see what's going on there. It's relatively undeniable that that individual who was at Sandy Hook is literally a B-rated, if not a C-rated actor who was looking for work before Sandy Hook. And, you know, I start the broadcast out with, you know, some hardcore news in relation to Iraq. And then, yeah, I sucker you in for some, for some hardcore truth in relation to Sandy Hook. You can uh, you can dismiss this information if you're a coward, if you're a little bitch that lives in fear of the government, or you can start doing your own research and find out the truth.